love these motherfuckers. It's time to f***ing go. All I want to do is f***ing eat. If we're not practicing the beat, somebody, we're practicing the beat. Everybody. Nowhere to run and nowhere to hide for four quarters. They got to see us in our house for four quarters. They got to look us in the eye for four. This is about us and our family and our house. This is about us. This is our mentality. We ain't backing down. We ain't running. Set a tone. Send a message. This is our house. Physical toughness wins in football now. And if you in this room, you got it. If you come in here, you better believe in it. Because this physical toughness is what makes the difference. Elite focus. That's all I'm doing to the guy across from me. I'm fixing to whip his ass. Not in my box. Not today. It's about us. It's about our family. We attack. You take that helmet and you strike him. And you strike him. And you strike him. That's how you get respect. No, I am going to pick the shit out of him. Physically, physically, I want to break him. Welcome back in to yet another edition of How About That <laughs> Dogs Cast. I'll tell you what. I have rolled around a lot of ideas this week about exactly what it was I wanted to talk about. And, and there seems to be uh, a, a lot of information out there that could help you make that decision. And sometimes I'll take social media and I'll reach out on there and ask if anybody has any certain ideas or, or anything that they might want to talk about this week. Um, this week, I didn't do that. I decided I could handle that decision-making pattern by myself. And when you look at everything that's happened so far, you have the completion of the season, the bowl games. You have early signing day. We had a national championship. We had the earthquake that was Nick Saban retiring. And, and now we move into what is today the OG signing day, right? That's what today used to be. Today used to be what early signing day has become. And since early signing day is now in full swing, I just refer to that as signing day. What today is, is sort of like, if you think back to, say, Major League Baseball or the NFL, they used to have these things. I'm not even certain that they still do have these things uh, going on about whether or not you might have a compensatory draft pick, right? Maybe you make a trade with another team or something like that, and you end up with, say, an extra pick, an extra draft pick. That would be sort of how I view what's going on these days with the OG signing day. I say all that just to say that we have plenty of information in front of us to start to properly assess what happened last season and then step back up and look ahead to what's coming for us in 2024. And the big thing that I think we ought to address this week is how the Georgia Bulldogs in 2024 are going to completely flip the script from what happened in 2023. Now, you may ask yourself, wait a minute, I don't quite understand. It's not like Georgia went out and had a losing season or mm, had a lot of turnover or a, a bad locker room. or There's nothing that you can clearly point to and say, this is what I'm talking about. But... As you sit here in the aphelion of college football season and you start to ponder what 2024 is going to look like, you have to take what you learned in 2023 into account. What do we know about the Georgia Bulldogs in 2023? Well, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, like most teams, they have a fairly young roster thanks to things like the transfer portal and routine graduation and what that means is you have a lot of young players, freshmen and sophomores, that are going to be counted on to carry heavy loads when you're actually playing football games. When we look back at the 2023 season, not only did they have a young roster where more than 50% of the roster was underclassmen, freshmen and sophomores, but for the first time, well, not the first time, but maybe more so than in recent years, the injury bug was a real issue for Georgia. Throughout the course of the 2023 season, 2023 season, but especially in the first half of the season. Allow yourself to think back to what it was like that first half of the 2023 season. Now, the numbers are going to tell us one thing, but think about the mood among Dog Nation. Think about the mood you had when you sat down to watch Georgia play. Was it one of trepidation? Was it one of unfulfillment 
was it one of longing? Like, yeah, they're really good, but they just aren't quite the same. And there were a lot of things that were talked about as to why that was the case. Here on this channel, we did our best to lay it out for you that it was in fact a combination of things that may have left you feeling that way. I said that the numbers tell one story, and they do, but then you have those feelings on the other hand. Specifically, all of that, I'm talking about the offensive production for the Georgia Bulldogs the first half of the 2023 season. They weren't blowing people out big enough. They were slow to get started on offense. They uh, didn't quite look as smooth or as polished as they had looked in the years past, especially the year prior. And I was sitting here telling you, again, there are a lot of reasons for that. you got a lot of young faces playing. You've got a new quarterback that hasn't taken a live snap in four seasons. You have injuries, so you don't have your full you know, handle on what your offense can be. Now, over the course of the season, we saw those things shift and move and improve. The injuries stayed a consistent thing throughout the year. It was just varying on who it was that was in or out of the lineup that week. But regardless, Coach Mike Bobo did a wonderful job, according to Kirby Smart, in using the pieces that he had available to put an offense on the field that kept the dogs undefeated through that first half of the season, and also kept them right on par with the offenses from the last two seasons prior to 2023. In some instances, they were better. Now, of course, this is an area where people are going to come and have an opinion about Mike Bobo, regardless of the facts. Facts be damned when it comes to this discussion for some people. That's fine. They can have their opinion. That's not what we're talking about here. The bottom line was, the Georgia, the Georgia offense, offense, the first, the first half, half of 2023, 2023 was, was every, every bit, bit as efficient, efficient and productive, and productive as, the as the offense was, was in 22 and, and in some cases, cases better than it was, than it was in 21. 21. In certain instances, the 23 offense the first half of the season was better than the 22 offense was with a second-year starter in Stetson Bennett and a third-year coordinator in uh, Munkin calling the plays. Again, this is the point where people who actually want to have uh, some reason to be angry or upset about Georgia football are going to pull their hair out. Because the bottom line is, it doesn't matter how you feel. The reality is, the team was winning, they were undefeated, and the offense was performing. That's simply the bottom line. Now, this is where I want you to expand your opinion a little bit, like expand your viewpoint a little bit, and look into the back half of the season. What did we see there? Again, injuries were a consistent thing throughout 2023. But in the back half of the season, in spite of those injuries, we saw Carson Beck really begin to find his stride. We saw that the offense became not less productive, not less explosive when they got into what most people considered to be the meat of their schedule, but more productive and more explosive when they were started playing the likes of of the Alabamas and the Missouris and the Ole Misses, <clears throat> excuse me, the Ole Misses, we get to Alabama at the end of the season, the Missouris, the Ole Misses. And that sort of, uh, it, it tells you one of two things. One, it tells you that everything that you saw in the first part of the season is the kind of thing that you should have felt really good about knowing that when those pieces came back together, they were going to be something better in the back half of the season. But it also tells you that football is a game that is constantly being worked on. It, you are constantly trying to improve. You are never a finished product. It doesn't matter whether you won the national championship the season before or not. Because the team that you have on the field is not the same season to season, week to week, even day to day. So when you look at what Georgia accomplished in 2023, the long winning streaks, the record long winning streaks, the production from the offensive side of the football, it makes you just have a better appreciation for what they were actually able to do. Now, the offense is the only part of the team that plays football. You also have the defense. Now, we mentioned earlier that you have a defense last year that is young in quite a few places and also could not escape the injury bug. That 
at the end of the year, the numbers for the Georgia defense were very, very respectable when you speak in terms of national rankings. They finished inside the top 10 in points allowed and other metrics. But, and it's nobody's fault but reality, when you compared them to the last two Georgia defenses, they clearly were not the same kind of unit. They didn't have the same sort of players that could show up and blow up a game anytime they wanted to. They had really good players, really good pieces, but not that game wrecker, to use Kirby's words. Needless to say, they took some bumps in the first half of the season too, but while that offense was starting slowly, the defense was playing well enough to keep Georgia in all the games and give them a really good chance to win. Now, in 23, the schedule provided a little bit of assistance there because it wasn't until the fourth week of the season that they were really sort of tested, and and then they made it all the way to the bye week undefeated, but having not truly faced an extremely powerful offense. That was okay, though, because the defense was good enough to do what they needed to do to help the offense along. That is the point that I really want to drill down on as we head into 2024. How is Georgia going to flip the script on the 2023 season as we move into 2024? And to put it quite simply, it all comes down to one thing. That would be the return of Carson Beck to lead the Bulldogs offense. Now, I don't think you can overstate how important it's going to be that number 15 is back under center for Georgia here in 2024. When we saw Georgia win their national championships, we saw a model a little familiar. Think about it. In hindsight, we might look at Stetson Bennett and say he was phenomenal all the time, but the truth is he wasn't. In 2021, Stetson made some plays along the way But he also put the dogs behind the eight ball in more than one occasion, taking chances, because that was the kind of game that he played. But at the 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 bottom line about that 21 team is that they had a generational defense. Unquestionably. If you wanted to make the argument, you could that that 21 defense is one of, if not the best collegiate football defenses in the history of the sport. Now, I'm not prepared to make that argument today, but I know you can. Maybe we'll get to that down the road. The 21 defense was so good, as evidenced by how many people they wound up putting in the first round of the following NFL draft, that all Stetson Bennett and that offense had to do was be able to make a play when they had to. They didn't have to roll up big numbers. They didn't have to lead the country in offense. They simply needed to score more than the other team. And with that 21 defense over there, that wasn't that hard to do because they only gave up somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 points per game that year. Then look at 22. The defense was not as good as 21 because you can't be. You can be really good and not be generational. There were always places on that 22 defense that you could point to Maybe it was pass rush. Maybe it was uh, something along the lines of one-on-one corner play or something like that. You could, you could nitpick that defense. But the bottom line was it was not as good statistically as the 21 unit. However, unlike in 21, the 22 offense was vastly more explosive. And if that defense in 22 gave up a play here or there, You could always trust that Stetson Bennett and Brock Bowers and Darnell Washington, that they were going to get the job done when it came to scoring enough points to overcome any spots that the defense might have had in any certain game. So you can see in 21 to 22, both teams, national champions, but they sort of inverted the way they had played the year before. That's where we get to 2023 and 2024. Now, clearly, I'm not stating that the 23 team would be the point-by-point equal to the 21 team. 
the 21 team was a national champion. But when you look at the trajectory of the season, the first half of the year, the offense was the one that was starting slow and the defense had to carry them along, cover their bases until they got to the back half of the season where now we have more injuries on the defensive side of the ball and you're having to play younger players that don't have the experience. So therefore, maybe you're not going to be quite as good as you were early in the year on defense. That was the point where the Georgia offense was hitting its stride to carry the team down the stretch. It was Carson Beck on the highlight reel. It was Kendall Milton on the highlight reel. It was Dylan Bell. It was Marcus Rosemey, Jack Saint. Those were the guys that were making plays down the stretch to get the W's for Georgia and help cover any inadequacies that the defense may have been dealing with at that time. So inside the 23 season, that's what you had. And it resulted in a very good year for Georgia. Just not a championship year. Well, here in 2024, I think what we're going to see is probably going to be the inverted version of what we saw in 2023. Y'all know we talk about champions, and that's why I want to tell you about the premier difference with a premier club membership from Premier Heating and Air. Regardless of the changes that come with the seasons, winter, spring, summer, or football, some things will never change. I'm going to be comfortable in my own home, and the comfort and well-being of my family will always be my top priority. If you feel the same way, choosing Premier Heating and Air is the play to take care of all of your family's needs when it comes to keeping you cool and comfortable in your home or business. Whether you're looking to keep your current HVAC system running at peak performance, you need to replace an aging system, or you're adding on to your home and need to upgrade to a larger heating and air system, which is what I did a few years back when we built an addition onto our home, Premier Heating and Air has got you covered. Be sure to check out their Premier Club membership offer to keep your home heating and cooling systems running at peak performance and avoid costly repairs in the future. Just click the link in the description below today to get started and give yourself the gift of time, freedom, and peace of mind to focus on the most important things in your life. The choice is clear, y'all. You've just got to experience Premier. So Carson Beck is back under center for the Georgia Bulldogs here in 2024. And like the thumbnail promised you, Georgia had an offensive, some would say juggernaut, in 2023. Carson Beck piloted an offense called by Mike Bobo that was a record-setting unit in the history of Georgia football in 2023. On an individual level, Carson was the guy who set new records for completion percentage over the course of the season, who led an offense that set records for third down conversion percentage over the course of the season. Carson, in his first year starting in both terms of touchdowns thrown for and yards passed for, Carson set records at the University of Georgia and wound up keeping himself, once we got down to the end of the season, right there in the top five nationally among the top quarterbacks in the country whether it was the Heisman Trophy winner at LSU or the quarterback out in Washington, Carson did everything he needed to do to guide Georgia in 2023 because he had found his stride. He had, along with the offense, figured out and found their comfort zone as they moved over the back half of the season. When we look at 2024, I think the key to Georgia's success, especially given the new schedule and the way they're going to be tested early, is going to be for Mike Bobo to trust his weapons, which the dogs have loaded up on, and let that sports car run. That's what Carson Beck is going to have his hands on here in 2024. They did wonderful things in 2023, but keep in mind, that was his first year starting in four seasons. Keep in mind that Coach Mike Bobo was a first-year offensive coordinator back in this system, and everyone was trying to meld everything together. Allow yourself to remember what Stetson Bennett did in his second year as the starter in Todd Munkin's system. It was Munkin's third year calling plays in that system, 
which we can now easily refer to as the Georgia system because the system they run today is the same as it was then. This will be Mike Bobo's second season calling plays in this system and Carson's second season at the helm behind the wheel of the sports car that is the University of Georgia Bulldogs offense. Now, it's not like they don't have gas in the tank or fun toys on the radio dials to play with. Let's keep in mind what this unit has. If Branson Robinson comes back from his injury and is anything close to 100%, he's going to be a difference maker for Georgia in 2024. But because you can't be certain about that situation, the dogs decided to get a little insurance, if you will, and bring in Trevor Etienne out of the transfer portal, who will step in as RB1 for Georgia to start the season. He gives the dogs a big play threat, pass catching ability out of the backfield, and a proven SEC running back. Now, there are other players in that running back room. Actually, that running back room is quite packed, like it's jammed full. The only question is going to be who is going to be able to make the strides to move into that top three, maybe four players that are actually going to see snaps. Speaking of second year in this offense, let's not forget about the wide receivers. Yes, Georgia is losing Brock Bowers, Lad McConkey, Rosemary Jack Saint, but they're also bringing back Dominant Lovett, Ra Ra Thomas, Dylan Bell, who, in case you didn't know and weren't paying attention, should absolutely roll into the season in 24 as wide receiver one for Carson Beck in this Georgia Bulldogs offense. Arian Smith returns. Anthony Evans, who caught a touchdown in the Orange Bowl, he's back. Tyler Williams. Then you have the young kids, Nitro Tuggle and Sokovi White, who are part of the 2024 recruiting class. If you need a comp for Sokovi White, because he's not a player that everybody might recognize because he wasn't a five-star or, or at the top of everyone's recruiting board, just know this. If you're worried about who is going to be able to give Georgia the kind of play on the field that Lad McConkey provided the dogs over the last few seasons, I present to you Sokovi White. Very, very elusive and quick, great burst. He can actually change direction at full speed. The thing that made Lab McConkie so great was his ability to get separation in small space. That is exactly what Sokovi White brings to the Bulldogs. Now, will he be able to get on the field as a freshman? I have no idea. But if you want to know what kind of player he's going to be, that's where you need to look, that sort of player. Now, that's just the wide receivers that were here either last year or as traditional recruits that came in mid-year. They also went to the transfer portal to beef up that wide receiver room, bringing in London Humphrey from Vanderbilt, Colby Young from Miami, and Michael Jackson III from Southern Cal. Those are the top three. And let's not forget, Oscar Delp is a really good football player, and he's back. That's right. That tight end room that everybody talks about at the University of Georgia, every bit as deep as it was in 2023. Just new names and faces. So you have Oscar Delp, Lawson Lucky, Pierce Sperlin. Then you have the freshmen, Jaden Riddell, Holton Heinrich. <clears throat> Colton Heinrich, excuse me. Needless to say, there are weapons everywhere. But what I think is really going to make this offense go, especially early in the year, is the fact that because of key several returning players, the Georgia Bulldogs will have one of, if not the, best offensive line not only in the conference but in the country in 2024. They're only going to have to replace their center, and any learning curve that's there for our new center is going to be erased because he has number 15 standing behind him and taking the snaps every play. So he's going to learn in a hurry. He's already been getting reps. He got reps plenty last season. Certainly he's going to get them in the spring. For the bowl practices, he got plenty of turn. They're going to be just fine at center, but you're still going to have to get used to doing it in game action, right? When the band is playing and the crowds are screaming. But that's where 15, Carson Beck, is going to be more, worth more, than any of us can quantify sitting here tonight. This is one of those things where the defense lost a lot of players off of last year's team. We've already stated that they were not as good as the year before. 
And there's going to be new faces in new places on the Georgia Bulldogs defense here in 24. That means, assuming we don't have any injuries, that you're going to have a lot of young players seeing their first significant playing time for this unit the first part of the season. And to be quite honest, there are going to be a couple of these true freshmen that were here as mid-year enrollees that are going to be expected to contribute to this team, both on special teams and to provide depth defensively. So just like we talked about in the back half of 24, when you had new faces that were forced into playing on the defensive side of the football and what that looked like on the field, we're probably going to see something very, very similar the first half of the season here in 2024. Extremely talented, but young, and they're going to have to learn in real time facing live fire. So unlike 23, when it was the defense that sort of covered for the offense the first half of the year and carried them until they found their stride, in 24, I see it being just the other way around. I see this veteran offense full of weapons led by Kirby Smart and being called by Mike Bobo as the unit that is going to be able to carry a little extra water that first half of the season and sort of cover the ugly spots for that defense as they learn their way around a brand new unit to start the season. Again, the expectations is this unit is going to be really good, speaking specifically of the defensive side, but they will be young and they will make mistakes. And in some instances, that will show up on the scoreboard. That's where Carson Beck and his unit are going to have to do everything that they need to do to make sure that they are covering for their guys until everybody finds their stride around the middle of the season and the dogs begin to ramp up toward what we all hope and most of us believe will be a 12-team playoff appearance in the college football playoff in 2024. Now, if everything shakes out right, everybody learns things uh, really quickly and things come together uh, even earlier than maybe I'm expecting and then just get better and better throughout the year, The dogs are going to be right there with an opportunity to compete for the SEC championship, even in in the conference without divisions for the first time since 1992. But it's going to be a fun season, an interesting season, because we aren't going to know exactly what everything looks like when we kick the games off the first game of the year. That's part of the reason why I love college football. That's the reason that coaches love to coach the sport. You want to see these young men grow and learn and mature and become everything that they believe and that you believe they can. So if you really are a fan of college football in its purest form, then the 2024 Georgia Bulldogs are going to be a team that you are going to enjoy watching. Now, I mentioned that today is the OG recruiting signing day, and And I've already explained how early signing day is now what I consider to be signing day. And this is a little bit of that, um, you know, that leftover, that extra. For whatever reason, you couldn't sign back in December, so you just decided to put it off. And now you're signing. A compensatory round, if you will. Regardless of how you feel about the OG signing day or what happened back in December, we already knew that Georgia was in really good shape when it came to recruiting the traditional way out of high school and building their program from within. But today, because it is the OG signing day, rivals graced us all with the announcement that Georgia wins the 2024 high school recruiting title for the fourth time since 2017. Friends, it is always about the players. Coaches, they're important. Not saying they're not. The program, in some instances, at a place like Georgia, things sort of handle themselves. If you're a championship-level program, though, the head coach doesn't really allow that part to happen. But when you have recruiting class after recruiting class, the way the Georgia Bulldogs have since 2017, it is clear to see that is why Georgia has the opportunity to not only compete for the 2024 SEC Championship, and national title, but SEC championships and national titles into the future. Year after year, 
Kirby Smart and his staff work like no other staff across the country. If you don't believe me, go back and check their social media. Go back and look and see how many schools these coaches are visiting every day when they're out on the road, how much they're doing after school lets out, watching kids play basketball or whatever other activities that they might be involved in. In-home visits. Outstanding on-campus visits. Nobody is doing it quite like the University of Georgia headed by Kirby Smart when it comes to traditional recruiting, and the results show up when you start to tally up what these recruiting classes look like. And again, we're not talking about the transfer portal here, just the high school recruiting. I talked a couple of weeks ago about how Georgia has the potential to salt the earth here in the state of Georgia in this next recruiting cycle. The amount of top-tier talent in the state this year is something that I can't remember. And I've been following high school recruiting now for about a decade, pretty closely. I do not recall a class like this where you have not just really good players, but top tier, like top three, top five level players at their position in the state of Georgia, all of them in the same class. If Georgia is successful in bringing in the kind of haul that they are shooting for, you're not going to hear a whole lot of talk this coming fall and next December about how Georgia isn't recruiting the state of Georgia the way they need to. That will not be the case. It will be the players that come out of the state of Georgia directly that are going to make this next recruiting class for Georgia whatever it ultimately is. And as we sit here today, it's going to be pretty good. Now, Again, we were just talking about how Georgia won the title. But look at just some of the names that are coming in in this class. This is a list from the underclassmen report who do great work listing off just the ESPN 300 commits. The number one cornerback, the number one inside linebacker, the number one safety, the number one outside linebacker. I mean, should I even continue to rattle off these numbers? Depending on which industry uh, ranking you look at, some of these numbers might fluctuate just a little bit, but right there at the top, there really is no discussion. But even if you wanted to try to poke holes in it, it's virtually impossible to do. This class that Georgia brought in in 2024 is the kind of class that is expected to, has not, not every player, that's never the case, but has a handful of players in it where they are expected to absolutely be contributors, both or either in their freshman year or certainly by their second year. Think about Malachi Starks and the kind of impact he had as a freshman. He got on the field in the first game. Everybody remembers that magnificent interception he had against Oregon. And by the end of the season, uh, thanks to his improvement and some attrition along the way, Malachi was a starter for that unit. And then he came back in 23 and was a leader for that defense. There are several players on this, uh, out of this recruiting class, most of which were mid-year players that are going to be counted on in the same way. There are plenty of splashy players in this final class, this final ranking for Georgia. I mean, again, I just listed off the number one players at four different positions. But the thing you can't overlook about this unit or this class is what they did along the lines of scrimmage. 12 of their total signees are either offensive or defensive linemen, six on each side of the ball. And these are not just bodies. Again, these are top-tier level players. The future looks bright when it comes to Georgia when you look at where are games actually won in the SEC, what actually makes you a championship program. It's your offensive line and your ability to maul people and run the football when you want to. It's your defensive line, the ability to stop the run when you have to and make a team one-dimensional. The kind of players that are coming in in the 2024 recruiting class are the kind of players that future championships are built around. Now, as is always the case, they have to go do it. But there is absolutely no reason, given the developmental program at the University of Georgia, uh, that these guys cannot get their bodies right, get in shape, and earn the ability to get on the field where they can let their God-given natural talents take over 
And that's where the coaching aspect comes in. And we all believe that they're going to coach them up to the level that is the standard at the University of Georgia. So I don't have any issue saying that this is the kind of class that you build and win future championships around. This is how it's done. Yet again, Kirby Smart has shown us that he understands and knows exactly how to build his program from the bottom up and choose the right kind of players that are going to have the culture and the athletic ability to succeed at the University of Georgia. So we look back at how the dogs are going to flip the script in 24 as compared to 23, and I think that's going to be so much fun to watch. I love the fact that in Carson Beck, the dogs are bringing back the top-rated returning quarterback in college football. Let me say that again. He's not just any returning quarterback. He set records at the University of Georgia last season for his offensive production, and he is the top-rated returning quarterback in college football headed into 2024. There are only a handful of schools that you may consider to be contenders in 2024 that are even returning their quarterback. And in large part, they are considered contenders because they are returning their quarterback. Then you look at what Georgia is returning, and you have to feel pretty good about where the Bulldogs sit with regards to the most important position on the football field. Here on YouTube, we are on the march to 10K. So if you're watching, if you're within the sound of my voice and you enjoy the content that we're producing here on the channel, please do me a favor. Go ahead, like the video and subscribe to the channel. And if you're just here by accident, maybe you stumbled onto us this evening, go ahead and check and make sure that you're subscribed to the channel because maybe we just popped up on your feed and you decided to give us a chance. I appreciate that. And I hope that we've earned the opportunity to do it for you again in the future. So if you will, check and make certain that you are subscribed to the channel. That way, you won't miss a new video or a new live stream every time that we pop up here on YouTube. You can also catch the podcast, the How About That F***ing Dogs cast, anytime you want to, and take it with you wherever you go just by subscribing, following on Apple Podcasts. There's a link to the, in the description below that'll take you right there. Go ahead, head on over, and that way you can take us with you anywhere you go and listen anytime you want to. Get all the Bulldog information you need right at your fingertips. Keep it on your phone all the time. That's what all the cool kids are doing. Did you know that we have a newsletter? We do. We do. Now, it's not something that I spam my followers with a lot, but when we have some news that's of import, or something that you might care about, or you just want to know what we're doing next here at A Damn Beast Media and the How About That F***ing Dogs cast, well, the newsletter is where you're going to find out about that. That's how you're going to keep up with everything that's going on in the world of A Damn Beast Media. Now, as I've said many times, thank you so much for being here. This show is free to watch, free to listen to, but it's not free to produce. And it is because of our valued channel members that we are able to put this sort of show on for you every week and produce the kind of content that I know you love because I love it too as a Georgia Bulldog fan. If you haven't considered becoming a channel, channel member in the past, I hope you will. Because again, it's because of the support that I receive from viewers, subscribers, and followers like yourself. That's what makes all of this possible and I can't say thank you enough, but I'll say it one more time. Thank you so much. In case you didn't know, we also have a fun show called the TikTok Takeover that we do on the first Thursday of every month. It's the kind of show where I, it's not just my voice you hear. You don't have to just look at my face all the time because I bring over some of the most prominent voices from Dog Nation and the TikTok community and have them join me and we discuss all things Georgia football. That show is a little bit more interactive. We get right into things in a hurry. We cover a broad area of topics, anything and everything related to Georgia football or college football in general. You never quite know what we're going to get into on the TikTok takeover. So if you haven't caught that show, go back and watch the previous recordings or catch us again on the first Thursday of every month here on YouTube 
because that is where the action is happening, both long form and short form, right here on a damn beast media. Thank you all for being here with me again. This was wonderful. I enjoy talking to you guys, and I love talking about college football and what's to come in, in the upcoming season. We're just getting started. We may be at the affiliate of the college football season right here, right now. But before you know it, spring practice is going to be here, and we are all going to be so much closer to the first actual football games. Those Clemson Tigers are looming out there ahead of us. And I, for one, well, I can't wait to see us put a whipping on that orange and white one more time. Until next time, you guys take care of yourselves, take care of your families, take care of each other. I appreciate you being here, and I hope to see you here again next time. Until next time, go dogs! I told them how about them fucking dogs? That's what I told them. Yeah.